Welcome to the First Congregational Church, where everyone's someone and Jesus is Lord. Today we'll be looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, where Paul talks about what was most important to him at that point in his life. Hopefully, we'll find that to be the most important to us as well. But before we look at that, let's pray and ask the Lord to open our eyes to his word and what he has to say. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father. Thank you for drawing us to you today. Thank you for allowing us to know you and to learn about you through your word. Please open our hearts. Please fill us with your spirit. Please help us to know what you have to say, not just to the Thessalonians, but to us today as well. Thank you, Father. We offer ourselves to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're talking about Thessalonians, and we are uh, remembering where we are in the story, that um, they got kicked out of Thessalonica, and they went on, and, and there was a church in Thessalonica that was suffering uh, persecution because of the gospel that Paul had shared with them. Um, so their church was there, but Paul was gone, uh, and he was concerned. In fact, he was, uh, he was fearful about what was going back on, going on back in Thessalonica. Uh, would these people stand fast in the Lord? I mean, he felt so uh, immersed in their lives that he, he says in verse 8, uh, he says, For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. He, was, he, he felt he would die um, if he didn't know what was going on, which is one reason he sent Timothy back, like Mike just read for us. Have you ever, you ever been in that kind of situation where you didn't know what was going on and you just felt you were going to die if you didn't know? Maybe you're going to have to give me a big head nod or something because you got the mask on, I can't. I think most of us have. I think most of us have been. I remember when my daughter was in um, Indonesia and she had, I think it was dengue fever at that time. She had a lot of these fevers, right, and, and sicknesses. And we didn't know what was going on. And she was, um, uh, she was having hallucinations and things like that. And we didn't know what was going on. And, and the people who did know what was going on didn't speak English. And so they couldn't really communicate well with us. And we didn't know what to do. And we just felt, uh, we felt our lives were going to end until we knew what was going on with our daughter. And it seems like Paul felt the same way about the Thessalonians. What's, what's going on if I only knew? So, so he decides to send Timothy back. And what he wants to do is to know how the church is doing. And, of course, that is our, our theme for this series is the church and, and being a great church. We want to be a great church. And so for this church to be successful in Paul's eyes, um, he wanted Timothy to go back and do some things. He wanted to help them to be a great church. And we want to be a great church as well. And so let's see what Paul wanted Timothy to do in order to help them along. All right? So... Uh, in verse 2, we see Paul speaking, and he's, he's talking about Timothy. He says, And we sent Timothy, our brother, and God's servant in the gospel of Christ, to establish you in your faith and to exhort you. So he wanted them to be established in their faith. What does that mean? What does it mean to be established in your faith? The word established means to, to strengthen, right, or to make secure. He wanted them to know for sure about what their faith was. Um, I, when I read this passage, I honestly, I think about uh, my college days. Um, I, uh, I was living in a dorm, you know, a small dorm room. There wasn't a lot of room in there, me and a roommate. Um, and so I wanted more room, and so I, I built a, um, a loft type thing, right, like a platform. It was so oh, probably six feet in the air. I put my bed up on top of that, and then underneath that I put a... a recliner and a black and white TV, you know, so I could sit there and recline, watch the Bears games and stuff. Yeah, you know where this is going, don't you? I, I'm not an engineering student, right? I was not good at building platforms. <laughs> and I would get up on that platform and that baby would just wee back and forth. And my, I don't know how my roommate slept, right? Because if I, we were close enough. If that thing fell, I was falling on him. And so I would take you know, I'd go out and get a board and some nails, bang, 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 and I'd try to put it here, put it there to try to make it so it wasn't, I tried to, to strengthen it, right? I tried to, uh, to make it stronger, to establish it so it wouldn't fall down. And that's basically what Timothy is trying to do with the faith of these uh, Thessalonians, is to establish it so it wouldn't fall down. He was trying to strengthen it. 
And so we want to make sure that our faith is strengthened as well. Now, I have to be honest with you. Uh, I feel in some cases like I'm repeating myself week to week to week, all right? Because there's certain things that have to happen, and Paul is talking about these things. And so I'm repeating them because Paul is repeating them. And if Paul is repeating them, they must be important, right? So let's, let's not say, Jim is just repeating himself. I'm so sick of that. Let's think, why, what is so important about what Paul has to say that we need to hear about it over and over and over? So we know that Timothy was going back to establish them in their faith. And in this case, what their faith is, is what they believe, right? Faith often means trusting. And of course, we do want to be established, strong, and trusting God and trusting our Savior. But it also has to do with being established, strengthened by what we believe, right? Do, do you feel like you are established, that you are strong in what you believe? If someone came to you and said, right now, pop quiz, what do you believe? Would you be able to answer them? Would you be able to say, well, I believe this, and I believe this, and I believe that? And then why? Would you, and they say, well, that's really interesting, but why do you believe that? Where does that come from? Could you answer that? That's what it means to be established in the faith. It's being able to... to not only know it, but know why you know it, and be able to express it. Well, I, I worry sometimes about our congregation and about uh, congregationalists and, and other Christians that I've met that seem to believe what they believe, but don't really know why. Or, and in fact, don't even know what they believe. What's important that we as Christians believe? I don't want to say. I hope. I hope you know. Well, I'll tell you, okay? I never mind. I know. I know it was a huge outcry. Tell us, Jim, tell us. I didn't actually hear that, but that's all right. The truth is, we believe that Jesus Christ is God, that Jesus Christ came on the cross to pay for the sins of the world and offers us a, free, a gift of relationship with him as a free gift. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. God did it because he loves us. That is the gospel. And we can't earn it. We can't do anything to deserve it. We simply have to trust him him to do it for us. That's what our part is, is faith to trust God. That's what we believe. Now, is that all we believe? No, there's other stuff that we believe as well. But that's the key. That's the important part. The other thing we believe is that the Bible is the word of God. That's how we know what we believe. And so we need to understand what the Bible says. And so we need to, as I said last week and the week before, we need to read it. Right? We can't claim to be established and strong in our faith if we're not reading the book from which our faith comes. We need to understand it. We need to know it. We need to study it. And we need to know every single thing there is to know about Christianity. No, we don't. In fact, it's okay to not be firmly established in every point of doctrine. All right? Growth means change, and so we want to be growing Christians. It means we have to have room for change as God shows us new things. Can I, I feel like I should turn off the camera at this part. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm struggling with the point of doctrine right now in my life. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'll give you a hint. It's something that I'm going to be teaching you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. That's kind of scary, you know? And so I'm, I'm searching the scriptures, and I'm reading the commentaries, and I'm trying to decide what exactly does this mean? What is God telling us here? And that's good, because that's how we grow. So yes, we want to be established in our faith. We want to know the basics. We want to know what we believe and why we believe it. But we don't have to be afraid if we're not an expert on every single point of doctrine. It's okay to change your mind on things as God shows you the things, as long as you're changing your mind for the right reason. If you change your mind on something because I said so, that's a perfect reason. No, no, that's a bad reason, right? You don't, you don't believe something just because I said so. You believe it because the Bible says it and because you understand why you believe what you believe. And you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you into that truth. We need to be established. We need to know what we believe we need to know why we believe it. But we're not really talking about individuals in this passage, right? We're talking about the church. So let me ask you something. Harder question. Do you know what our church believes? If someone walked up to you a street and said, that is a beautiful building, 
I wonder what they believe in that church. Could you tell them? It scare, that really scares me, frankly. Because as I shared just a couple of weeks ago, one of my pet peeves is the fact that too many congregationalists think you can believe anything you want, which is totally wrong. But unfortunately, that's a, a rumor out there. We can't believe totally, we can't believe anything we want. We are a Christian church and we believe what I said before. That's what our church stands for, is the deity of Jesus Christ, the Bible as the word of God, and walking a life worthy of his calling as described in the Bible. We have to be able to know what does our church believe. I know that we talked a while ago at the Friday morning men's group about why people weren't uh, inviting people to church, right? Most of you have not invited people to church here before or, or very often or recently. Why not? I fear part of that is because we don't really know what we stand for as a church. I think we need to to come together, maybe, I don't know, if you want to do some sort of class or some sort of group get together where we talk about that kind of thing, I think that would be good because I think that we maybe have forgotten or never knew or it's never been clear. We need to talk about what we as a church really believe. Um, but it's not okay to say you can believe anything you want. So Timothy went back to Thessalonica to establish the church, to make sure that they were strong in their faith, that they knew what they believed and why they believed. So that's the first thing. We, to be a good, great church, have to be established in our faith. We have to know what we believe. The second thing that we see is uh, in verse 6, Timothy has come back and he has said to Paul, but now that Timothy has come to us from you, and has brought us the good news of your faith and love and reported that you always remember us kindly. Uh, basically what he's saying, yes, not only does Timothy say, yes, you are strong in your faith, you know what you believe, but that knowledge is coming out in acts of love. Remember when we see the word love in the Bible, it's not talking about an emotion, it's talking about action, it's talking about things that people are doing and the, the beliefs that we hold the things we really trust, the things that we know that we know cause action. And if they don't cause action, then it's not really faith. And so what the Thessalonians are, are showing Timothy is that their faith is strong because they are abounding in acts of love. Not just to each other, though certainly to each other, but to the world as well. A little bit later in verse 12, Paul is praying for them and he says, And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all men as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness. Right? That's the, the goal, is for us to be established in holiness. Love and holiness are actions that come from the faith that we have. And so we as individuals and we as a church should be walking in actions that reflect the faith that we have. Do you think that we do that? Better, do you think that you do that? Don't answer. I hope so. I hope that the actions you take reflect your faith, reflect the God that we serve, and what he has done in our lives. Not just towards each other, but to all people. All people. Even people we don't like. Even people that have hurt us. There's no, there's no parenthesis in here. It says, except Bob down the street, right? It's all people. That's who we are called to love. And that's what our faith would call us to do because when we were enemies of God, he came in the person of Jesus to die for us. If he did that, that's what we're called to do as well, is to die for our enemies. All right, so we're going to be established in faith. We're going to be abounding in love. And finally, I, I already mentioned this last one, we are going to be bathed in prayer. If we are going to be an established church, a strong church, a church that shows out the glory of God, we can't do it. We don't have the power to do it. We don't have the ability to do it in, on our own. We need God. Psalm 127 says, unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman watches in vain. Meaning that we can put our best efforts in,
But unless God moves in our lives as individuals, unless God moves in our church, it's not going to happen. And why don't we see that? Well, because we have not, because we ask not. Too often we just let it go. We don't pray for one another, and we don't pray for our church. I know that um, Laura and I, we pray for our kids every day. We started this, I, I've mentioned it before, when my son was in eighth grade and we were pulling out our hair. We, he, was, he was going down the wrong road. We didn't know what to do with him. And so we just threw up our hands and we, we started praying. Uh, Laura and I prayed together. We prayed with the kids. We bring them together every single morning. And we prayed, Lord, be with these kids because we don't know what to do with them. Right? And, and that sounds funny, but, but our God has honored those years of prayer. And we see him working in the lives of our kids. And we see them established in the faith and abounding in love. It's a wonderful thing. And that's what I want for us as a church as well. I want us to be established. And the only way that happens is if we pray for each other. Now, I did a while ago, I, I would say, um, look at one another and pick someone to pray. And I haven't done that in a long time. But it was mentioned to me this week that, uh, that people are missing that. So just a moment. Just, just look around the room. Make eye contact with somebody, and then throughout, throughout the week, pray for them every day. And what should you pray? Well, how about you follow Paul? Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all men, so that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness. Will you pray that for me? Will you pray that for each other? Will you pray that for our church this week? So, take a moment. Just look around. Go ahead, look around. Make eye contact with somebody. And then commit to pray for that person throughout this week. And then next week, I'll probably forget to mention that again. So next week, you don't need me to tell you to do that, right? You can do it yourself. And if you're watching online right now, just ask the Lord to lay someone on your heart for you to pray for. And maybe there's somebody who you have been laid on their heart to pray for you. In any case, we need to pray for one another. We need to ask for God's power in our lives so that we can be established in the faith and so that we can abound in love. We live in a world that is filled with hindrances, filled with temptations, filled with with things and people and events that want us to go off of the path that God has called us to. But we want to stand fast, right? That's what we want, is to stand fast in the faith so that someday, when Jesus returns, we will be established in love and holiness and truth. So let's just take a moment. Pray that for yourself. Pray that for the person that you'll be praying for this week, and most of all, let's pray that together for our church, that God would use us for his glory. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you do love us, and thank you that you have called us to your service, and thank you most of all that you are empowering us to be your people in spirit and in truth. Father, help us to, to pray for one another. Bring to mind the people we should pray for, and help us to pray for them, and, and help others to be praying for us as well and help all of us together to seek you, to seek your truth, and to abound in your love to each other and to all men. Lord God, we know that we are impotent when it comes to, to serving you on our own power, but we know that you provide all that we need. So we offer ourselves to you today and throughout the week. And we ask you to help us to walk with you for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.